The season is ending. Championships are about to be decided. Houston, the Pirelli World Challenge has landed. Revs coming up. We're green. Big Fifth coming off the three. Two, three, four abreast in some spots. Side by side action. He absolutely nailed it. Three way battle. And we've got an incident. You would expect nothing less. Oh, oh. clips the inside apex. Very racy. This is going to get interesting. Side, right. That is Look a brave this. move. What a pass. This is what World Challenge is all about. The 24th season of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships is about to come to its conclusion, and it's all going to unfold in the streets of Houston, Texas, in an area renowned for great sporting competitions in the shadow of Reliant Park, Reliant Stadium, and the Houston Astrodome. Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Creamer, and welcome to the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston, the final two rounds of the Touring Car and Touring Car B-Spec Series, and the final round of the GT and GTS categories. You know, when any series comes to its final round and there are championships hanging in the balance, the pressure is high enough. But add in a couple other factors. One, a street circuit that hasn't been used in years and has never been run on by the series, in fact, familiar to only two of the drivers among all that are entered here this weekend. Add in that three of the four classes, the points battles are incredibly close, including in Touring Car B, where one point separates the top two competitors. And then you add in the legendary heat and humidity of Houston, Texas itself. Today, it is a pressure cooker for these competitors. It's going to be amazing. When we're done, we will have champions decided in all four classes. And to start things off for the last time this season, it's tough to say that. Let's get up to the booth and my partner, Calvin Fish. Thanks, mate. What a fantastic racing season we've seen. And today, it sets us up for the perfect championship scenario with all of those titles on the line. The wild card is this racetrack. It's very bumpy. First visit for the majority of the drivers and very little track time due to track grinding and repairs. So all of this just adds to the anxiety and pressure of the moment. Who will crumble under the pressures today and who can step up to the plate? Maybe it's going to be GT defending champion Johnny O, who can use his experience to capture another title. He is one of only two drivers who have raced here before. He'll take us around for the Cadillac Key Corners. I'm Johnny O'Connell with Cadillac Racing, and these are the Houston Cadillac Key Corners. This is the front straightaway. We get up to sixth gear, and we come up to our chicane. This is done in second gear. We're hard on the brakes. Fifth gear, fourth gear, third gear, second gear. Late apex there, coming out of 2.8. Now it's full throttle, accelerate up into third gear for turn three. Really neat corner that opens up for you on the exit. Now, giddy up, second gear, third gear. We get a tick into fourth gear before we break down to second for one of the tightest corners that we've had all year. Turn four, and now a really fun part of the racetrack, up through the gearbox. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, really starting to haul here. Difficult, difficult corner using all the racetrack in the sixth gear and now to one of our great overtaking areas turn six hard braking changing down into second gear you look for that late, late apex get to the throttle hard use all the racetrack up into third gear very fast turn seven carrying a lot of momentum in third gear ticking up into fourth and hard on the brakes down into second gear for turn eight nibble on the curb a little there use all the road coming out on the exit back up into third gear fourth gear then down to second gear we are busy here up into third gear on the exit at turn nine. Now the most challenging corner on the racetrack, turn 10. We're into fourth gear, lightly on the brakes. Into third gear, through our apex, looking at start finish and enjoying another Cadillac lap. Johnny's experience includes a win here in 2007. There's a look at the San Jacinto National Monument, the Battle of San Jacinto, a turning point in the Texas Revolution, topped, of course, by the Star of Texas. Look at that, Rocket Rick Mears, a Pirelli World Challenge fan. That's nice to see. Got some uh, Touring Car and Touring Car B highlights for you, and, of course, featuring GT and GTS. Calvin, you talked about this track. This crowd is ready. They know something special might unfold here. And we're looking at that long bending curve that wraps around the Astrodome, and at the end of that is our Motul braking zone. It's a good one. It really is. You come around Turn 5 as that very fast right-hand sweep around the stadium, Greg. It enables drivers to really set up for this Motul braking zone down into Turn 6. You can see there it's wide open. It does give you a little bit of room on the exit as well, and I think we will see some maneuvers taking place there today. And one thing we want to note is there's been lots of difficulties getting this track ready. They only had a short amount of setup time. As one, the, the Texans actually played in Reliant Park last weekend. And two, there's been lots of track issues themselves. And as a result, schedules have been compressed. They've lost a lot of track time. And as a result, Calvin, we didn't have qualifying. The grids for all of the classes established by pole position 
as a result on our Touring Car B-Spec poll. Point leader by one point, Ernie Francis Jr., the young 15-year-old, will start up front. And in the uh, Touring Car category for the Motul Poll Award, if you will, uh, it will be Ryan Winchester. And basically with that, with no qualifying points, he has clinched the championship. So congratulations to him in that number 72 League and Industries entry. And this is some of the highlights as we came to the green. Look at Michael Cooper there, that third place car, the Atlanta Motorsports Group Mazda, just doing lots of hunting and searching. Fred Emick had a wild run. That was the bump that had created so many problems. He was able to rein it in, and Winchester able to lead into that first turn two. But right here, Cal, is where the Trick RB Championship ended up on its ear. Look at this. Robbie Davis loses control of that mini and takes out Ernie Francis Jr., our championship leader. Who would have believed the drama here on the opening lap? Unbelievable. Here's the onboard look from young Ernie Francis, and you can see Davis just got pushed to the outside, got in the junk out on the outside of that curb, swung around, collected the 15-year-old frantically signaling in the car, I want to go. He didn't realize he was broken, and as a result, Davis rejoined in 18th and started a huge charge. And this has huge championship implications. Those two boys were only separated by a point coming in. Meanwhile, up front, it was Winchester leading, but Michael Cooper in that Mazda looking very, very fast. Starts to the inside, then looks to the outside. Winchester staying put, defending absolutely beautifully. Doing a great job. Look for his sixth victory on the year. Look at this moment. Michael Cooper gets really loose. Sandberg flashes by. And Brett able to move up into second. He would then start to run down his teammate. Meanwhile, Tyler Palmer, the remarkable rookie, all over the back of the veteran Joel Liberini. See that mini dancing? Watch for it again in just a few minutes. Here is where Brett Sandberg went for the lead, which would eventually give him his fourth win on the season. He knew that his teammate already had the championship clinched. He could race him aggressively. Just great racing between the two teammates. Going there into the break zone for turn four. Makes that move stick. Cooper there in the background. Meanwhile, watch this move here. That green Mazda of Dave Alejandro. Little bit optimistic here. A little bit too late on the brakes. Down into turn six. The braking zone. Bang. Into the side of Chris Capaldi and into the barriers he goes. Capaldi was his break. There was no way that was yeah. going to work. <laughs> Optimistic maybe was the word there. He would get a drive through penalty for that. But now watch again that first mini in your screen. Robbie Davis continuing his charge up to the back. Gets around Alejandro in that queue and was on his way. Meanwhile, watch Tyler Palmer here. A dance. Watch the hands on the wheel. Flailing at it. Controlled it. Dives to the inside. The remarkable young rookie picks up the lead in that mini. Boy, what a great story he has been this year. His version of a Scandinavian flick there, Greg. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, the Black Forest Emic VW Mobile One Mini Cooper into the lead. Lipperini, that was a 30-point swing for him in terms of the points would be huge. Shea Holbrook, that tricky turn three, catching her out. She got forced out wide. Yeah, she's frustrated right here. Just gets out in the gray stuff, out in the marbles. No grip there. Just clips the tires. You can hear her a little anxious inside the car as a result, but the damage, the tires moved on the track, the full course cautions came out, then the checker, and there it is. Brett Sandberg getting his fourth win of the season in the gear tie, Compass 360, Honda Civic, and more importantly, behind him, you're gonna see Tyler Palmer bringing home his first win, and that was a great story, but of course, it was the charge back to eighth for Robbie Davis, with Ernie Francis Jr. finishing officially in 19th. That had a huge implication on the Touring Car B Championship. Here are the race results. Sandberg, Winchester, great day again for Compass 360. Cal Cooper right there in third. Michael DeMio, his first ever start in fourth. The same thing for Landy. And in Touring Car B, Palmer Lipperini, Ernie Francis Sr. But there in eighth, Robbie Davis. That's the huge development. That really is. Lipperini still in with a shout for this championship, but dropping back to second, that hurts his chances for race two. And our Optima Battery's best start of the race, the number 32, 32 racing Honda Fit of Jonathan Baker moving wow. up seven spots. How did he get traction, Greg? It's amazing. Drove the wheels off that car, apparently, <laughs> quite literally. Now let's take a look at our Sunoco Hard Charger Award. Chris Sneed doing a nice job moving up nine spots. But he got to the end of the race in his Sneed Speed Shop Mini Cooper. Congratulations to Chris. The Sneed well for done. Speed, right? Sneed for Speed, baby. And the Cadillac move of the race, well, that was pretty easy. It was Sandberg's big move here on Winchester. Cleanly executed, two very good drivers. Really nice job there. That was great, hard, clean racing between the teammates. Nice job, and the uh, key at turning point of the race, a no-brainer, the start in Turing Car B. Well, just uh, you come into a final uh, championship weekend, you just can't believe that you could write a story like this one. Robbie Davis gets wide. In the driver's meeting, they said you can't cut through there without potential penalty. That had to be in his head a little bit. 
Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Our Motul Fast Laps of the Race Awards, Brett Sandberg getting it in Touring Car, and Robbie Davis in that comeback charge in Touring Car B-Spec. And, of course, the final round of the Touring Car and Touring Car B Championship based on race finish. And for this young man, Ernie Francis Jr., another twist. We'll tell you about that when we come back as we have highlights for the final round of the championship. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships is being brought to you by Sunoco Race Fuels, fueling victories for five decades. By the Cadillac V-Series, the 556 horsepower CTSV Coupe Sedan and Wagon, the world's fastest family of cars. And by Pirelli, power is nothing without control. Welcome back to the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston here in Reliant Park in Houston, Texas, as we are getting ready for our second race of the weekend in Touring Car, Touring Car B-Spec, the season finale, and a huge development after the problems in that first race for Ernie Francis Jr. and his car being broken, his dad, Ernie Francis Sr., stepped out of his car and said, Ernie, you take it. This is the only way you've got a shot at the championship. And so Ernie, they had to fit a pad in it for the small, young 15-year-old, <laughs> but uh, he was ready to go after it. This was his shot. And as we sit now on board with Brett Sandberg and, of course, uh, part of that amazing Compass 360 team from Carl Thompson. And that is all part of the HPD support package. Earlier, we visited with Lee Niffenegger. When we went set out to develop the 2012 Civic Si, we worked with Compass 360, actually, as, our, as one of our development teams. So they built the, the base car, and we worked on a lot of the you know, technical components. They're the ones actually running the cars while we're working on maybe the drawing side of it and the analysis side and working with the series. So we, we kind of have a collaboration with, with a team like this. We get a lot of great support out of HPD, and it's the same support that any team could get from them. So obviously we got a very generous contingency program. It's great to work with a, a professional team, one that runs a lot of cars, getting a lot of feedback and data. We've done pretty well over the years. We're on, on track to win our second Triple Crown here, so that's driver team manufacturer. So obviously that relationship with HPD is working really well for us, and I think they agree that it's working pretty well for them. Racing is important to Honda in general, not just Honda Performance Development, because it you know, really proves that the cars have speed and reliability, which is Honda's trademark. Boy, and they've executed beautifully, and there you see the front row, Brett Sandberg, your Moat Tool Pole Award winner, again based on how they finish. He's in that gear tie, Compass 360 machine with Winchester alongside. And in the Touring Car B-Spec category, the Moat Tool Pole Award again because of his win. Tyler Palmer, who has had a remarkable season in that Black Forest Emic VW Mobile One sponsored Mini Cooper. And to the highlights we go, and once again, watch for it here. Michael Cooper, very aggressive early on. We hop on board that Atlanta Motorsports Group Mazda 3. And look at them all over that bump again, Cal, and Cooper able to slot into second this time behind Sandberg. But look at Sandberg. He flies through that chicane, just carries so much speed here without the tires being up to temperature or pressure. Now, this was a marvelous piece of racecraft by two very talented drivers. Cooper trying to go to the outside in our Motul braking zone. Turn six, Sandberg giving him room, and Cal, these two race clean for corners. They did, and watch the moment right here. Michael Cooper nearly loses. Remember the tank slapper from race one? This time he hangs on to it and gets the lead in the motor race. And finally, right there, executes. Meanwhile, here comes Ernie Francis Jr. in dad's number two, coming by Jim Cleveland in the Fiat, able to knife through. He was on a huge charge, coming from virtually last in the class, up through it. And now, watch this, Brett Sandberg, you talked about how good he was in this chicane. Yeah, he's just got confidence there. And with the street circuit, that's what you need. He just barrels through there lap after lap. But watch this moment. Mike Cooper loses his brakes. Nowhere to go except the back of Sandberg. It was a huge off. You can see the drivers dealing with the setting sun, but look at the impact there. That had to be a huge shock for Sandberg. Certainly Cooper, when he hit the pedal, nothing was there, and Sandberg just taken out. Sandberg frustrated but completely understood, of course, as they were visiting. And that ended the race under caution once again. So Ryan Winchester gets his sixth win of the season. Nicely done for him. And Tyler Palmer brings it home with a second consecutive win 
in the season finale. Remarkably, his eighth top four in only eight appearances. So here are the results. Ryan Winchester, Rashiti DeMio, another top three sweep for Compass 360. Emic and Sebastian Landy completing the top five. In Turin Carby, Palmer Lipperini, Gronke his first podium, but a look at seventh and eighth. Yeah, Robbie Davis just gets enough points, but look at this. Ernie Francis Jr., great drive through the field to eighth. If he had caught Robbie Davis, who knows what might have happened. Yeah, absolutely. Chrome horns may have been blaring, and Lipperini may have been smiling. Optima Batteries, best start, Michael Cooper. That great launch up and gained two spots, so well done for him. Then let's now take a look at our Sunoco Hard Charger Award, and it was a great one. Remo Rushidi, the rookie, up from eighth to second, obviously gaining six spots with some great launches. And Michael Cooper, the Cadillac CTSV move of the race, with help from Sandberg, this beautiful pass, Cal, but also the Kia turning point of the race involved these two guys as well. Yeah, these two guys are in the thick of the action, and this is not the sort of action you want to see. Great failure for Michael Cooper, just takes out Sandberg takes him out of the lead of the motor race. And it was a big shunt, both were okay, that was key. Then our Motul fast laps of the race, not a surprise, Michael Cooper was hooked up in that Mazda 3 from Atlanta Motorsports Group, and Tyler Palmer on his way to his second win. Now let's take a look at our TC Drivers Points presented by Volvo, Ryan Winchester claiming the championship, Sandberg and Rashidi a top three for the Compass 360 boys, Michael Cooper, who knows if he'd been able to run the whole season. And in the Touring Car Manufacturers Points, it's Honda, a dominant season led by Carl Thompson's Compass 360 boys. Afterwards, Jeff Leber caught up with our champion. So Ryan Winchester, you clinched it before the start, but way to finish it off. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we knew we had it clinched before we got out there, um, but as always, we want to go win races. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have anything for Brett there in the first one. I wouldn't have had anything for him in the second one either, but uh, Cooper lost his brakes and took him with him, so uh, I was fortunate to win the second one. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we got a championship, and that's what we're here for. Third in the points last year, champion this year, Turing Car Beastback. Robbie Davis wins it. Lipperini jumps to second. Ernie Francis Jr. in third. And again, Jeff Lepper found our champion after the race. 2013 Touring Car Beastback champion, Robbie Davis. Robbie, man, you pulled it out. Oh, my goodness. I At the beginning of the race, I had no idea that I would be sitting here right now being the champion. Uh, just a crazy, crazy race and really crazy season, but it's been so much fun. And uh, the key to it all is just being able to finish every single race, and that was my goal, and just to finish it in the top five. Didn't happen today, but every single other weekend it did, and that's what really got me here. we got to ask you about the incident in lap one. Yes, um, we were just starting three wide. Apparently, um, I didn't catch what happened behind me. I don't know if I got bumped or really there's just a lot of marbles out there, a lot of dust, and as soon as you get out there, you're done and just lost control of it, nothing I could do. Luckily, the car was salvageable. It's a little ugly right now, but uh, we were able to keep it running. I came back. Definitely want to thank anybody watching back at home. Super excited. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, and then, of course, the Mini of Charleston race team. Chris McAllister, Stuart Kestenbaum, and my father, as you mentioned, Brad Davis. Um, and thanks also to mom, who's at home watching this. It was an event-filled season, and it certainly was an event-filled race. There is your touring car podium. When we come back, we will have the season finale in GT and GTS at the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston. Stay with us, folks. Welcome back to Houston, folks. It's the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston. We are ready for the season finale in GT and GTS for the Pro World Challenge. And the heat and humidity of the Turing Car and Turing Car B-Spec races has evolved into, or devolved maybe, into cold and very wet. Cal, maybe comfortable for you Brits, but not so much for the guys on the track. Can you imagine this, Greg? Oh. Another curveball for these championship contenders here today. Unbelievable scenario. But prospects for 2014, Cal, not dampened at all. Earlier, Jeff Lepper caught up with CEO of World Challenge, Scott Bove. The Pirelli World Challenge Series has seen tremendous growth, record numbers this year. What are some of the highlights that we've had in the 2013 season? I tell you, what a, uh, what a fantastic year we have had. I'm, I'm so, uh, so pleased with the way the team has come together. All the teams, I mean the team, the World Challenge team, the SCCA Pro Racing. Uh, the entries have been uh, third party validated. Everybody is talking to their friends, everyone's talking to other teams and bringing them with them. We've had a great interest from the OEs in Europe to bring their cars and showcase their vehicles. We've got uh, plans for next year to bring uh, Ferrari to the, to the GT class in a GT3 format. Uh, Porsche will be with us next year in a GT3 format. Uh, there are uh, no less than four or five other manufacturers that have made commitments to the series next year. 
Uh, these GT3 cars are factory built, purpose built race cars. What a great, great opportunity for the series. We're making an announcement uh, uh, at the awards banquet that Pirelli and Pirelli World Challenge uh, are going to be signing an extension to the contract. Five more years of Pirelli having the naming rights for the series. Five more years of Pirelli being the official tire. What a, what a great opportunity for all of us. You know, on the driver's side as well, I hear some rumblings there about some new driver classifications in GT. Well, you know, um, we've always figured that the gentleman driver is the backbone of sports car racing. Historically, it always has been. We want to give these drivers an opportunity, drivers who are very good drivers, but aren't necessarily paid professional drivers. And we separate GT into two classes, GT and GTA. Uh, in the GTA class, we're going to have a, a new sponsor this year, came on for uh, for three years now, BRM Watches. What a, what a great partner it's going to be to win that watch and to win the Sportsman Cup at uh, Burley World Challenge GTA. Great things ahead in 2014, the 25th season of the championship. And uh, tell you what, it has become a destination series. That's awesome. Let's take a look at our Motul race analysis. Good field, but the weather's really the story here. Well, a mere 35 degree temperature <laughs> drop, Greg. I mean, this is unbelievable stuff. Teams and drivers are going to have to adapt and adapt quickly. Absolutely. And of course, two classes on the track at the same time in these conditions. That is going to make things awfully interesting. It continues to rain. It is wet and slippery. Let's get to our Pirelli storylines, the first of which has got to be the track. Well, it's a new track for World Challenge, Greg. Only two drivers here, Johnny O'Connell and Nick Johnson, have previous experience. Very compact schedule, which was reduced even further. No qualifying and no bonus points, which is significant today. It is huge because in both classes, the two championships are incredibly close. Johnny O'Connell comes in second in points to James Sofronis. He's got to work some magic today. How do you have an ace up their sleeve in this young German, Rene Rast? He is a star, and he is going to be Sofronis' wingman today. And Johnny, of course, has his full season partner, Andy Pilgrim. Now, both championships turned on their ear at Sonoma. Here's a look back at what happened and what might happen today. It is time for the 13th round of the GT and GTS championships to unfold here at Sonoma Raceway. All Cadillac front row, headlights flashing on O'Connell's car. I wonder if there's some oh, problems. He Pumps going around. Oh, look oh. at that. That was really, really tight. Ball would go in the back of someone there in turn two, Greg. There may be damage. Boy, he had airtime. O'Connell and Baldwin Calvin, the two class point leaders are off. I cannot believe what we're looking oh at here. This is unbelievable. The two title leaders are off in the dirt. It's just a consequence of Johnny O'Connell trying to make up for that stalled start. Jack Baldwin, day is done. Crew is working on that car furiously. Johnny O'Connell is coming out. Anything in terms of points is huge. They're going to keep digging. They know this championship will come down to the wire. So huge championship applications that race Sonoma last race out. Come in here. Does that change for you, Johnny? You were right in the middle of that and sort of the cause of it. Well, I wouldn't know whether I was the cause of it. Sometimes that's a, a, a racing deal, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm disappointed. You know, I really could have put things to bed at Sonoma, and uh, the way things turned out, we didn't. So we come here, and, uh, you know, uh, the championship's important. If, if we do what we know we're capable of doing, we'll, we'll, we'll leave here in good position. And, Jack, you were right in the middle of that and actually a victim of what happened. What was your perspective of that? Well, you know, my situation was completely separate from Johnny's. Uh, Johnny had no influ you know, influence on my ultimate result uh, because I, was already, I had already had a problem with uh, Ziegler in turn two. So uh, I was actually coming back to pit road when, uh, you know, when Johnny had a problem and it, we had our second incident. So, you know, it was unfortunate for both of us, you know, both guys on the pole, both guys broke track records. Both guys leading the points and both guys from Georgia. Uh, it wasn't a good day for the boys from Georgia, you know. But uh, here we are at Houston, and um, this is going to be challenging, to say the least. Well, it'll definitely be challenging for both of these guys as they look to see if they can sacrifice a little bit of speed, a little bit of time here, and win a championship. Investigative journalist Jeff Lepper on the job. As you can see, they also have to deal, we've talked about it, with these conditions. It is not going to be pleasant, except perhaps for the guys in the all-wheel drive Volvos. They might be grinning here as this is about to unfold. They might be grinning because they also had a special guest earlier, Houston Rocket point guard Jeremy Lynn stopped by. He's a Volvo owner and enthusiast. And while he was there, Jeff Lepper found him. Jeremy Lynn, here with Volvo today. Had your movie come out, the documentary on Friday. Kind of an inspiration for a lot of people. Tell us about that. 
Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, got to watch it last night, and for me, it's just a chance for me to share my story with the rest of the world. And the main point behind it was just uh, showing Lynn's sanity through my own eyes and how much God really did for me throughout the whole story. And truly an inspiration for a lot of people. And how about these Volvo? They have 60 yards. And how does this relate? You got to sit in it earlier. To, to your car. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty sweet. Definitely different uh, to sit inside a race car and how, how different it looks, but uh, for them to take, a, you know, basically the same car that I have and, and change it up and make it into something like this, it's incredible. Basketball ends for you. You see in one of these Volvo S60s? <laughs> I'd love to take one of these around for a ride. This looks awesome. Boy, I'll tell you, the guys are going to take it around for a ride, have to deal with some interesting conditions. Let's get to our Moat Tool Pole Awards in GTS. Again, starting on points, it is Jack Baldwin. No points awarded based on points coming in. Uh, so he will start there. That's going to be huge. And in GT for James Safronis, maybe the biggest bit of news here is the opportunity to start with a clear track and not spray. That's a great point, Greg. Having a clear windshield and picking your way around this racetrack in these conditions for the first time will be key. He's still got to hold off Johnny O'Connell, a busy Jeff Lepper. Ask him how he's going to do that. Well, thanks, Greg. And the guy that benefited from all that was James Safranis. James, now you're in the points lead. What are you going to do to carry that over here today? Well, I mean, here we are, Houston. It's hot, street course, street fight. Johnny O's been here a few times and won. So I got my work cut out for me. We got some help from Audi. We got Renee Rask co-driving with me this weekend. So that's a big help. The guy's an immense talent. But, uh, you know, I have to just worry about my own race. I have to just race like I'm going at any other race. And frankly, if I win, then there's no questions about the championship. If Johnny wins, I got to be in second or at least be right behind him. But, you know, there are a lot of sequences and scenarios that could play out. But I keep telling my guys, let's just, let's just set the car up, go for the win, and just see what happens after that. It's going to be fascinating. I mentioned a busy Jeff Lepper, busy including getting married in Victory Circle in Houston on Saturday night. So congratulations to Jeff and his new bride, Angela. All right, folks, it is time for us to get to that special command. Here's Claudio Burton of Fometics. On behalf of Pirelli, Tire, Optima Battery, and Fometics, high performance simulation, start your engine. <laughs> And this great field springs to life. Let's get you to the starting grid. Again, set on points coming in. Zafrotis, the Thermal Club Hoffman Power Weights Audi, and the Johnny O'Connell driven Cadillac. Up front, the two championship protagonists. Row two, it is Andy Pilgrim, third in the points in his Cadillac, and Randy Popes in the Capex Racing Volvo. And in row three, completing the GT field, Alex Figge in his Capex Volvo, and Rene Rast in the Global Motorsports Group Swisher Racing Audi. Cal? On the GTS pole, our championship leader, as he has been all year, Jack Baldwin in the Fomatics, Porsche Cayman. Next to him, Lawson Archibald, five-time winner this year, in the Black Dog Speed Shop Chevy Camaro. Row six is our final championship contender, Mark Wilkins in the Brakes Kia Motors America Optima, alongside the very quick Andy Lee in the Best IT Chevy Camaro. Next row is local driver, young Alec Udell in the Motorsports Development Ford Mustang, and Mr. Seven Time himself, P.D. Cunningham in the HPD Real-Time Acura TSX. Row 8 is two series vets, Tony Gables in the Black Duck Speed Shop Camaro and Nick Hussain in the HPD Redline Oil Acura TSX. Next up, Brad Adams in the Voodoo Dad Dog Yo MTV Raps Mustang and the very rapid Nick Janssen in another Kia Optima. Row 10, another local driver, Artie Topi in his Ford Mustang alongside rookie Jim Taggart in the Taggart Autosport Lotus Exige. Row 11 is another rookie, Roger Rodas in the always evolving performance Ford Mustang and Buzz McCall in the second of the Fomatics Porsche Caymans. Rick Mache heads row 12 in the Mutual Sparco Nissan 370Z and rookie Mitch Landry in the Versacrain Ford Mustang 302S. Next row is Brian Kleeman in his DXD Clutches DWW Motorsports Nissan alongside Robert Stout in the TRD Locus Oil E3 Spark Plug Scion. And the final drive in the field today is Don Ishtuk in the Miltank Exhaust Revo Audi TT. So that sets our starting grid. The field right now being led around by the remarkable CTSV pace car from the folks at Cadillac. And of course, a couple of those beautiful CTS VRs right there in the field. At the back of the field will be the Cadillac safety vehicle, this incredible Escalade. So fortunate to have a partner like Cadillac supporting the series. And of course, they have been with us all season long and have sponsored title sponsorship of events as well as these vehicles in the team. We'd like to hear a little bit more from Jerm Verpel out of Cadillac. 2013 has been a great season for Cadillac, back-to-back -back manufacturers championships, and here we are in Houston, 
with a chance to go back-to-back -back driver's championship with both Johnny and Andy in it to the end. The one advantage is we've got is the only guy in the grid that's ever raced here is Johnny O'Connell, and he actually won here in a Corvette. So caddies are good if, you know, we got a nice long sweeper, which is always good for the Cadillac. So we feel pretty confident, you know, we got to worry about the Volvos with their all-wheel drive in the rain a little bit, but we're pretty confident that uh, the, the Cadillacs will do good today. We'll start worrying about 2014 in about two weeks from now. Um, we'll do some test sessions, get ready for the season, but um, you know, we know with the expansion of the, the rules for FIA GT3 cars coming in that the competition's going to step up again, just like the Audis this year really stepped up competition. So, you know, our guys will do the work that they always do and we'll be able to compete again because, you know, you know, back to back, there's nothing like a three-peat. Well, we sure look forward to having them back. By the way, the schedule has been pushed back. We're running a little bit behind. And to let you know, the first couple of laps will be single file under the pace car. So we're going to sneak away for a break, but we will be back for the green. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships is being brought to you by Volvo, designed to win on race day, designed around you. By StopTech, world-class brake components and systems for racing cars and high-performance vehicles on the street and track and by the Bob Bondurant School of High Performance Driving, internationally recognized as the leading authority in driver training celebrating 45 years. The Pirelli World Challenge Championships are being brought to you by Motul, the official lubricant and brake fluid of the Pirelli World Challenge. By Eibach, the world leader in high performance suspension. and by Kia Motors and the Kia Optima. It's not your average mid-size sedan. Welcome back everybody. It's the Fomatics Grand Prix of Houston season finale for the GT and GTS machines in the Pirelli World Challenge. Again, running a couple of laps here. They are counting, but under caution. Green flag coming up in just a minute. But we were talking about earlier with Scott Bove some big announcements about GT3 machinery coming into the championship. And one of them is going to be coming from an American company, SRT, the performance arm of Chrysler. And a few weeks ago in Baltimore, we caught up with SRT Motorsports Gary Johnson to tell us about this exciting new program, the Viper GT3. The GT3 series all over the world is exploding. We've got uh, lots of cars running in Europe, for example. We have customers there, and they're also asking for new cars. So it just makes sense to bring that specification of car into the Pirelli World Challenge Series. It's great that they've uh, agreed to bring in the car as a GT3 spec completely with all the aero. You see the dive planes on the car, and of course the big rear wing, that's all GT3 spec. This uh, SRT Viper, GT3R has a 680 horsepower engine. It's got a X-Track transmission, sequential paddle shift in it. It's also, of course, lighter than our last car, but it's a lot wider, so it's got a huge track on it, and it's gonna really perform well. The SRT Group is really looking forward to developing this car, making it available to customers, and having them run it in the Pirelli World Challenge Series. We're anxious to get it out to them and let them have fun with it on the track. Well, I think we're going to have fun calling it on the track. That is a wonderful program and a great announcement, Cal. It's a beautiful piece, and it's ready to go. Looking forward to it. Let's get to our GoPro quad box presented by Kia, Cal. Top left, we're looking at the 61 car of Jim Taggart. who will roll off 10th in GTS, then the number 11 of Tony Gables. He'll start 7th in the GTS field. Alec Udell, local boy, will roll off 5th. And Renee Rass, look for this man. He should be quick in the rain in that Audi. The Swisher Audi, typically campaigned by Bill Ziegler. So that's some of the great onboards we're going to have. I think a great idea to give these guys a couple of laps under caution. Didn't have a lot of track time, certainly none in the rain on this track. But pace car is in. It is time for us to go racing and get this season concluded, get the championships decided into that tricky final corner, if you will. James Safron is bringing them around. Watch for it. Green flag. The season finale is underway. Right away, Randy Popes takes a look down to the inside of Pilgrim. Can't get it done, Cal. Well, you'd have to think that those Volvos in these conditions will be the favorite. Look at Renee Rouse down to the inside of Alex Figgy into that break zone for the chicane. Boy, wasting no time. He knows his role. Slots in right behind. And look at, again, Aschenbach. All oh, runs sideways no. in the background. Boy, he's feeling the heat and these uh, conditions. And Alex Figgy trying to get down underneath 
Frost and his teammate, and he gets it wrong. It looks like he got into the barriers, Cal. Yeah, really late move here. I don't really understand this. It's really not a hard braking zone in these conditions. Just gets it all wrong. Clips his teammate and Renee Rast. He's in the barriers, too. Oh, unbelievable. On board with Randy. One more look at it. There he comes across. And you wonder how much damage is to Randy's car and also to Figgy's. There's the yellow in that corner. And Renee Rast able to continue. Looks like he got away with it relatively unscathed. Yeah, the car looks clean, which is good news for Audi. They need him here today. And right now, let's reset things. If Sofronis wins, he wins the championship. If O'Connell wins, he wins the championship. Not quite so settled back in GTS. And look at Lawson Aschenbach. He knows he has to win. Wasting no time, forces his way by Jack Baldwin. Now he's got to just lead every lap of the race. Those bonus points for most laps led could be crucial. Unless Jack Baldwin has problems here today, Aschenbach realized he's got to get the victory and he needs bonus points as well. Everything to play for, he is going for it. Yeah, really, Lawson's got to win. Jack's got to finish third. Lawson's got to get every or the most bonus points for laps led. If Jack somehow ends up outside of the top three and Lawson wins, he'll have it. But let's not forget, there's a third guy in the mix named Mark Wilkins. Yeah, and he's fading. He is really fading. We're hearing from the pits that he's got some kind of ABS issue in these conditions. Andy Lee runs a strong third. Cunningham is up to fourth already. Boy, and Cunningham fastest and look at Baldwin sideways. Cunningham fastest in both practice sessions. You'd think he will be a player. Early times here in this season finale. Leading out front and overall, it's James Sofronis and GT, GTS, Lawson Aschenbach. This is how racing should be. The top sports car racers in North America. 50 minute door to door, all out sprint races. Standing starts and zero scheduled pit stops. A battle of the brands with over 18 manufacturer brands racing. Watch us on the NBC Sports Network and online at world-challenge-tv.com. The Pirelli World Challenge. This is how racing should be. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships is being brought to you by Hawk Performance. Race proven, street legal. By GoPro, the world's most versatile camera. And by Optima Batteries. With twice the life and 15 times the vibration resistance, Optima batteries really are the ultimate power source. The rain has let up here at the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston, but the track's still awash. Randy Pope's trying to find a way by Andy Pilgrim for third. Up front, it is still Sofronis, O'Connell in second. That would, at this stage, Sofronis would win the championship. But, oh, look at this move by Randy Popes. Knifes up the inside of Andy Pilgrim. Frankly, I'm a little surprised it took that long for those all-wheel drive Volvos to start their march. Our Optima Battery's best start, Don Ishtuk, up seven spots in that opening lap from 25th. Great run by Don Ishtuk. In doing so, it's a pretty abysmal visibility. You got to give him some serious props, I think. Cal. Really good, clean lap from him. And of course, we had the problem for Figgy. Hello, here is Figgy, I believe, going slowly <laughs> yeah. at the side of the racetrack. Speaking of which, he got involved right there early on in the going with Renee Rast and his teammates. So he is a driver who's led the most laps this year in GT competition. And everyone thought he should have been a factor for the championship, but just had a few too many issues at certain races this year. There's our GTS leader, that's Lawson Archibald. He's done a tremendous job. Well, he really is, Cal, and really is probably the only job he can do. And a bit earlier in the weekend, we caught up with him to find out what his plan was. To coming into Houston, you know, we have a, we have a new track for everybody, a uh, tough track. It's bumpy, it's, it's got some fast corners, a lot of slow stuff. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty good for our car. And, uh, you know, we're just going to focus forward, push, push as hard as we can, and, and basically just get the best finish we can and do the best job we can, because that's all we really can do right now. And uh, in the end, hope, hope it kind of, you know, falls in our hands. So, um, so you know, I got to say hats off to everybody at Black Dog Speed Shop. Our team Chevy Camaro's been fast all weekend, all year for that matter. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been a good year. Uh, whether we win or lose, uh, you know, I'm going to be a gracious competitor. And, and, and uh, you know, uh, congrats to whoever win, ends up winning the championship. But uh, we're, we're in attack mode. We're going to push hard. It's a pretty simple focus, that's for sure, at this stage. You just saw Randy Popes via the onboard getting around Johnny O'Connell, picking up that second spot. And Mark Wilkins, again, that third contender in the championship, has gone around Mr. Udell and is really starting to move up through the pack. Is this track now, Calvin, starting to dry a little bit? Yeah, I think he's trying to adjust to this braking issue. They haven't had a lot of wet running this year with that Kia in these sort of conditions. And these ABS systems work great when they're working. If they're not, it can be a nightmare. 
you start to see that little bit of a dry line right there. Randy Popes into second and quickly has started to make some ground up on leader Sophronis. Sophronis does not want to let Randy by. He is sitting exactly where he'd like to be at this point with a buffer between he and championship protagonist Johnny O'Connell. So we're still early days though in this race and up front overall it is Sophronis leading GT, Popes, O'Connell and Pilgrim, Aschenbach in GTS over Baldwin, Lee and Wilkins. Back at the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston, Lawson Aschenbach opening his lead up in GTS. And folks, here's a big development. We just got word from race control that they have been informed by race management that this race will be eight minutes shorter than anticipated, Cal. And that is really significant, Greg, because what it will not allow is this racetrack to dry out quite as much. And a lot of these guys have maybe gambled on a dry setup here today for the racetrack to come back to them. They don't have that time factor anymore. The teams will be on the radio giving that information to the, crew, to the drivers out there. It is go time. You have to go. You can't wait. Boy, another bit of nuance and a twist and turn on this track, which has had this weekend absolutely chock full of them. And there, this is Baldwin. Now, that's going around Nick Janssen, who's been struggling and is down a lap. But Petey Cunningham behind him is coming. And here's a good look at the battle for 10th. You see Ishtuk in the Audi, then Rodas in the Ford, and Brad Adams in the Ford. Of course, the uh, Boss 302s have been an absolute staple in the GTS class since its inception. They came on board midway through that first season and in the second year have made up a huge component of this category on board the Voodoo Dat Dog Yo MTV Raps Machine. And a bit earlier in the weekend, we caught up with Ford's George Gadu to talk about the Ford program in World Challenge. One of the things Henry Ford is known for is the production line. And he'd be proud of us today because we've used that production technology and that approach to build race cars. Predominantly race cars are custom built in small uh, batches, one or two by, by shop. Where we're different is this Ford Motor Company has built Mustangs in the plant and using production technologies. And so we're in the third build for the Boss 302S. We're over 120 vehicles. And that has allowed us to bring a quality and consistency to the cars. It has actually made the car a huge value in, in the racing world. Being part of the Ford racing family, the key word there is family. The Ford Motor Company continues to be a family organization and that's the way we embrace our fans and most of all, our team. Racing with the Mustangs coming up on 50 years, the 50th anniversary. So we look forward in 2014 in World Challenge. It's just an exciting time for Ford racing. Boy, it has been that, and it is an exciting time on this track. James Safron is seeing that blue and yellow Volvo of Randy Pope's growing ever larger in those mirrors in traffic, Cal. Well, we talked about the pressure at the beginning of this race, and right now Safronis is feeling it. He just has to tread carefully, try and position the race car to make it really difficult for Randy Pope's to get through. Here we see the traffic there. Boy, very close, and of course, as this track is drying, as good as these Pirelli wets are, these P0 wets, they are going to start to take a real pounding. And Rene Rast is coming up. He has caught this group. He's been lapping two to three seconds a lap faster than anybody else. Call him Fast Rast, I guess. And here he comes, making the move, trying to swing around Johnny O'Connell. If he can get by, that's wingman to perfection. That is exactly what the GMG group were looking for, is for Rene Rast to do this carry and hassle Johnny O'Connell and take the heat off Sophronis. Boy, and you can see on the loaded side of some of these lines in the groove, that track is virtually dry, and these drivers now purposely trying to find a little bit of damp on the track, I think, Cal. We hear that oh, Johnny look at this move! Yeah, Post is a little bit wide there. O'Connell trying to take advantage. We understand that he's been working with his traction control system. There's some settings he can work with to try and dial it in and get it so he gets some grip. And this race tank, look at Rust! Rust is coming hard! Trying to make the move down to the inside. No, not quite going to be able to get it done. Boy, this is fierce stuff. You'd think Sophronis might be on a rain setting. Maybe some of the others are on a dry setting, waiting for the track to come to them. At this point, it's still Sophronis leading overall in GT and Aschenbach controlling things in GTS. The Pirelli World Challenge Championships are being brought to you by Grassroots Motorsports, the hardcore sports car magazine. By Privacy Star, blocks unwanted calls and text messages and lets you file complaints directly with the Federal Trade Commission. And by Racekeeper, the industry's leading video data logger because Racekeeper helps you learn to drive faster. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships is being brought to you by Mercedes-Benz and AMG Customer Sports. By the Cadillac V-Series, the 556 horsepower CTS V Coupe Sedan and Wagon, 
the world's fastest family of cars, and by Honda Performance Development. Welcome back. The line is well and truly starting to dry here at the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston. You even see a number of cars now have the windshield wipers off. And this is going to be interesting to see if cars had a dry setup and the track is coming to them. If cars had a wet setup, that is going to be going away. And you're going to see these guys certainly hunting for wet spots on the track to keep these Pirelli P0 rain tires alive, I would think. There's your run order, a four-car battle for the lead. And Randy Pope's looking very racy right now, Cal. He's looking racy, but I tell you what, James Zafronis has done a stellar job at the front of this yeah. field. He has maintained pace, he has positioned his car beautifully, and now he's got his wingman right there in the background. This is what they set up for this weekend. Let's bring in a really fast guy. He has a lot of experience in one of these race cars. See what he can do. Absolutely. He has been a spectacular as we talked about his speed. And Randy Pope's doing a nice job at Zafronis. You think about it, in these wet conditions, Rass thinking about it, he's gonna go down the inside of O'Connell. He does it, great. He this gets is it. Till break zone, he gets down to the inside. O'Connell is in trouble. Championship on the line, our defending champion. He's back to fourth. Oh my, this is a huge development. And now Sfronis though, a little wide there. And here comes Popes, he got a nose inside. Not quite enough, and he's gonna have to slot back. But Sofronis leading early in this race in the wet. You're the first guy into these corners. It could be a mess. Oh, but this time, Randy got a run. Sofronis moves over a little bit. Randy's there, and Randy's through. Can he hang on at the exit? That all-wheel drive plants that car a new leader. So as fast as O'Connell's demoted, so is our leader, Sofronis. Sofronis is still in good shape. Positions right now, he's in great shape. Even if O'Connell gets up to third, he will still clinch the championship. That is Sofronis, so he's still in the cap bird seat for the championship right now. I think the racetrack is going away from him right now. Popes has been very patient with his all-wheel drive Volvo, but he's gone to the point. Boy, and this is interesting, isn't it? Suddenly O'Connell is really starting to ramp the pressure back up on Rast. You were talking about the reports from pit lane that he was working with his traction control. As it dries, maybe he's hit that sweet setting because suddenly that Cadillac has come alive. Yeah, and look what Rene Rast is doing. I think he's backing up Johnny O'Connell. He is doing the perfect job he's got in between Sofronis and O'Connell, wow. and he is backing him up. O'Connell looking for the wet. He's looking to cool down those wet tires, maybe get a little bit of grip later in this race. But this is the perfect scenario. Look at Rast. He's backing him up in the apexes of these corners. O'Connell will not like this. Oh, and O'Connell tried to force his way through. Yeah, absolutely. Rast just doing a little bit slower roll through the apex. And that is really got Johnny O'Connell, I'm sure, in fits right now. We hop on board now. Lawson Aschenbach still leading in GTS as he has from the second lap. He needs those most laps lead points. And of course, he is running an Ibox suspension. We're going on board with the Ibox suspension cam. And I would think on this track, Cal, it's taken a beating. And like Lawson said, this should be a good racetrack for us. It's bumpy. You've got hard brake zones. You've got some fast corners. And he and Mark Weider, his engineer, have really done a beautiful job in getting the setup perfect for the first half of this race. Right now, he's got the grip. Those Pirelli tires are working beautifully. The Ibex suspension is doing its job. Lawson Archibald, he knows how to win championships. He's doing the job right now, Greg. Boy, that he is. Things are hotting up in both classes here in Houston. The World Manufacturers Championship in 65 one of the most legendary duels in motorsports. Bob Bondurant zips into the first turn, opening up number 72 Ford GT. The brash Americans had announced they would take the title from the undefeated titans of Ferrari. And as the world watched, the USA made good on its word. To claim victory for America. For team driver Bob Bondurant, that triumph was yet another epic highlight in one of racing's most storied careers. This is our history and our soul. We're the Bob Bondurant School of High Performance Driving. For over 45 years, we've taught the Bondurant method of ultimate car control to nearly half a million graduates. This is where NASCAR pros get better, future champions get started, and everyone gets to redline the fun meter. Call 1-800-842-RACE or visit us online and choose your car to drive faster than you ever dreamed. The GTS points championship mass simple right now, but it might be getting complicated here at the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston. Even though Aschenbach is leading, Baldwin sits second. That's enough. There's Baldwin in that Porsche right there. That's enough to clinch the championship. But Petey Cunningham is coming. If he pushes Baldwin to third, suddenly this is going to get interesting. Oh, that was O'Connell into the back wow. of Rass. Cal, I think maybe O'Connell said enough. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Renee was trying to just create a gap between. Ooh. Oh, and O'Connell's now wide. 
big question mark. Remember Middle Ohio when that caddy got some front end damage, a burst of radiator, Greg. Is O'Connell in trouble from that incident? You see a little bit of the front bumper there, damage to the left corner. Boy, I'll tell you, there's so much that can happen here. And he got through, then skated wide, Ross right back through again, so O'Connell has to start that charge once again. But Calvin, that Cadillac, as this track is drying, looks like it is well and truly coming alive. I think they may have had a dry setup on that car and it's starting to pay off. It is starting to pay off, but I tell you what, Johnny O'Connell is running out of time and this factor of Rene Rast is really playing into this championship scenario. Johnny O'Connell has to use every inch of his experience right now. And if you want to follow along with exciting action like this, remember, you can do it with our social media, world-challenge.com, for all the latest news and views on the Pirelli World Challenge, world-challenge-tv.com. You can check out the cool in-car video, driver interviews, watch this race and all the other Pirelli World Challenge races online here. Facebook, search the Pirelli World Challenge fan page, interact with other fans, and on Twitter, join the World Challenge Twitter account at twitter.com slash WCRacing. Instant updates on great action, and it is furious here, Cal. Boy, you want to be able to follow Follow along, even in the offseason, you can rewatch everything and what a year it's been. It's been a fantastic season. I tell you what, Sofronis now is having to delicately pick his way through this traffic. Remember, there's a dry line, so if you go offline, you can't carry the speed that the traffic has potentially through the apex. So, treacherous times for James Sofronis, critical point in this championship. Also on the right, we've been watching Jack Baldwin's progress. That is not P.D. Cunningham, that's Nick Asayan, his teammate. But Baldwin took him a while to get around Brad Adams, and that has allowed Cunningham to close up on his rear deck. So things getting pretty fierce right now. And Johnny O'Connell still trying to figure it out all the while. Randy Popes, that all-wheel drive Volvo, is just easing away, but he's coming up into a bit of GTS traffic. Yeah, Post is looking really comfortable up front. Brilliant race by Randy, just really patient in the early going. You expected that Volvo to go straight to the front. He realized the big picture, this championship's on the line. Don't take either O'Connell or Sofronis out of the action. Just try and ease your way to the front. Look how sideways Rene Rast is through that right-hander. The Whoa. fast sweep of turn five. Yeah, unbelievable. And here's a question for you. O'Connell oh, down the inside. Oh, Archie Barge just way right through. Calvin stealing your line, makes the pass stick. This now makes things interesting for Rene Rass. As a, something's up here. Sofronis is coming back to these guys. I tell you what, and something's up. Well, Connell is angry. I don't think he's like the games that Rene Rass. I'm sure he appreciates his talent, but right now, I'm not sure he liked the games that maybe Rene Rass was playing. Whoa, nice job there by Rodas to realize there are two, three cars coming through. Ross got a little bit of a run here. Sofronis is in trouble. I think the track, the conditions to his setup are going away from him. O'Connell's are coming to him. But remember, if Popes wins, if O'Connell gets up to second, that is still okay for Sofronis with the championship. Yeah, that's the huge thing. That's that huge point swing of 30 points first to second. That is key here. And right now, if O'Connell is able to get by, it's all right as long as o if O'Connell wins it, it's game over. If Sofronis wins it, it's game over. But behind that, it gets interesting. Ooh, that was helpful for O'Connell as Ross got a bit bumped nice up the there. Inside the what a move! He gets him. He gets him. He clears him. Next target is Randy Popes. This is not enough for Johnny O'Connell. He has to get to Popes, the leader. Well, obviously, he paid attention to that call for the crew that this race is going to end up short. You got to go now. He has dialed it up. And now Rene Ross, he's, what is he going to do with Sofronis? This has got huge complications and implications. But it's Popes leading overall in GT. Aschenbach in GTS. Wow. The Pirelli World Challenge Championships are being brought to you by Audi Sport Customer Racing. By the Cadillac V-Series, the 556 horsepower CTSV Coupe Sedan and Wagon, the world's fastest family of cars. And by Ford, go further. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships is being brought to you by Honda Performance Development by Porsche. And by the Fiat 500 A-Bar. Furious action in the GTS. Oh, and a hit! Cunningham just got into the back of Baldwin. Knocked him sideways here at the Fometics Grand Prix of Houston. Wow, he kissed him oh. right there, Greg. And this is significant. The GTS team will be on the horn to Jack Baldwin. Same with Larson Aschenbach dominating this race. You have to hold on to second place for the championship. It's all to play for. And here we're on board with Randy Popes. 
caught up behind Andy Lee for just a moment, and here comes O'Connell. Oh boy, that's a say. Nice job by Nick, realizing that he was going to come through. One car splitting right now. Your overall leader, Popes, and O'Connell. And if he can catch Popes, here he goes. He's around Lee and coming up on the back of Popes. Meanwhile, we're back here. This is Brad Adams, and I think this is going to be that's Andy Pilgrim and Renee Ross. They're at it again. Yeah, they're going side by side there, but O'Connell is in attack mode. It is go time, and he is coming fast. Look at him there, dealing with traffic. There's Post our leader down the inside of the GTS championship leader, but he will only stay as the championship leader if he can hold up PD Cunningham, who's right in his wheel tracks. Yeah, good point. Keep in mind that with Lawson Osterbach getting the bonus points for most laps led, third won't do it for Baldwin. Here comes Cunningham. He thought about it. Then he had to tuck right back in. And keep in mind, folks, P.D. Cunningham, the consummate street course racer. This is his 28th different street course. More wins on street courses than anybody else with 13. We're on board with Tony Gables. Oh, but Cunningham just got ushered wide by that GT battle coming through, Cal. He lost a lot of ground. Yes, yeah, Sofronis and Pilgrim to the inside. Pilgrim to the inside on Sofronis. They touch. They oh. touch. A big bump, and suddenly Sofronis sideways. So is Pilgrim Ross trying to get by both. Ross the wingman said, don't rough up my team leader. He comes back and attacks Andy Pilgrim. Look at him, oh! forcing him wide. Nearly forced Pilgrim into the wall. Boy, Ross playing wingman extraordinaire right now. And uh, Pilgrim, I'm sure, frustrated, as is Cunningham. Look at that ground he lost to Baldwin. And there, Pilgrim gives Ross the old chrome horn. Boy, these guys are at war, Cal. The caddies are coming. The caddies are set up for these track conditions. The track is coming to GM. And look at... Again, Cunningham going, what do I have to do here? I can't do anything. These guys are so wide in front of me. Pilgrim going to try the outside of Ross. Turns across, a little tap again. And again, Cunningham going, there's Baldwin. And Baldwin looking at his mirrors going, beautiful. Love this. He's loving it, but look in the background. Mark Wilkins <laughs> yes. is suddenly on the scene as this track has dried out. He's still a factor here today. Baldwin, he's here on the same speed as these GT cars. What a job he's doing. He is just fantastic. Here we go. Pilgrim trying to get down the inside of Ross. Ross moving way over. Pilgrim going to the outside. Beautiful. Beautiful. He gets the inside. Now Ross comes back at him. Oh, punch, counter punch, and they're dead even coming out. Pilgrim's, oh, bang! Ross just hammering into the side Cunningham of Pilgrim. Cunningham to the inside. Cunningham needed to clear the GT traffic, and Ross does it for him. Look at the damage on the right side of the Audi. Yeah, and the question is, what kind of damage to Pilgrim? But now Cunningham is through. Now he's got only to chase down and go after him. But look at Pilgrim knifing by and picking that spot up. There he goes now around Cunningham, and that means he's only got Sophronis in front. They get down into our mode dual braking zone. He's making up a ton of ground. Oh, Sophronis in trouble. Sophronis has got to cut down left rear, Greg. Oh, boy, obviously. This could be it. This could be it. Game over, possibly. Had to come from that contact. Oh, boy, Sophronis in trouble, not just on the track, but in the championship as well. And Renee Ross backing up. And look at Wilkins. Wilkins is all over the back of Andy Lee. These dry track conditions. The Kia is absolutely flying, but look at this. This is oh. a game changer right here. You're looking at it, folks. You know, James Safron is one of the most experienced drivers. For the lead. O'Connell, this is for the championship either way. He doesn't know that Safronis is in trouble yet, but right now he's done everything he needs to do. Get to the front. Yep. If O'Connell wins, it's over regardless anyway. And as you said, he may not know yet. Uh, boy, I think that guy in the back is a caddy fan, huh? That corner worker <laughs> coming unglued back there. And why not? They are watching from the best seats in the house. An incredibly close race. James Safronis down into the pits. Championship is over for Safronis. Gutted, I'm sure, Cal. And here we go into the final few moments. Up front, O'Connell over Popes, Pilgrim, and Ross in GTS. Aschenbach leads it away from Baldwin, but Cunningham and Lee right there. The Pirelli World Challenge Championships are being brought to you by Mini. And by Mazda. And by Invisible Glass. GTS Action Furious here at the Fomatics Grand Prix. We're on board with a flying Mark Wilkins. He is absolutely on it right now, battling with Andy Lee here for the fourth position. Kia doing a great job all season long in this championship. We checked in earlier with Scott McKee.
2013 is our second year in the Pirelli World Challenge and we have to look back on it and say it's been a really successful year. Uh, we've had five podiums, two of which were victories. Motorsports resonates with everybody. Whether they're watching on Sunday or not watching on Sunday, if we let people know that we race and we win, they feel better about our brand. And that elevates the brand and that means that we're on more people's consideration list, that they're shopping Kia, that they're not thinking about Kia as the old Kia, which was more about discounts. Uh, now it's more about really great products that are exciting, that get them kind of emotionally engaged and that they want to consider, uh, you know, to have in their own driveway. No matter what, 2013 is, it should be considered a win for Kia and for Kinetic Motorsports, our partner. But then we look beyond that and what do we do next year? Uh, Kinetic has been a fantastic partner, so we want to stay with them and we want to grow with them. And now we have to figure out what we do next to keep elevating the Kia brand. Well, and right now, Mark Wilkins is elevating the positions here. He's working on Jack Baldwin, and this is huge, Cal, because yeah. there, Petey Cunningham has gone by him. And that's enough for Oshenbach. If Oshenbach continues to lead this race, he gets that checkered flag. Baldwin in third, clinches the chairman for Oshenbach. Here comes Wilkins to the inside. He's on the damn part of the racetrack. Oh, you can hear that engine, that engine note, as he's skating on those brakes, but he's through. Baldwin is struggling. Baldwin is struggling here today. He did a good job in the beginning of this race, just being patient, being smart, but right now, he does not have the pace. Wilkins is absolutely flying. The question is now, can he catch Cunningham? Can he potentially catch Oshenbach? Yeah, that's the huge thing because remember, Wilkins only a point behind Oshenbach coming in. Oshenbach has led, as you pointed out, clinched those points. But if Wilkins is fast enough to catch him and pass him, he might just win this whole thing here. And but look at that car, he's skating around everywhere. Unfortunately for Jack, that Fometic Stop Tech Mo Tool car seems to have gone away. But up front, Johnny O continues to lead away. We go on board with uh, Jim Taggart here. And just on board through this Lotus, I think we're going to see some shots of some cars coming through. Yeah, there you go. That is our leader. And O'Connell has played this to perfection, Cal. He really has. I mean, but he felt that he, he really realized that. I was in trouble. I had to go in attack mode. The car was coming to me, dialed in that caddy, and boy, oh boy, he used all of his years of experience and his track knowledge to great effect here and has got the lead of this race. Absolutely, and of course for Baldwin, slipping back to fourth. Oh boy, white flag, last lap for Johnny O'Connell. He is in a position, still a treacherous track, but he's negotiated it beautifully so far. And of course, now blue sky starting to appear uh, just the way this weekend has gone. But for Johnny O'Connell, he might be on the way to a second consecutive Pirelli World Challenge GT Championship. Yeah, two races outside of the top 10. Suddenly, it was all to play fair on the streets of Houston. And what a curveball this racetrack has thrown us. It was bumpy. We didn't have much track time. Then there were track problems, no qualifying. That is all of the pressure anyone can handle. And Johnny O has handled it beautifully. As indeed, looking at potentially an amazing uh, fifth win on the season. And here is Lawson Aschenbach. Here's James Safronis, who's back out. But you can see he's still got issues. Look at that. Yeah, him, Cunningham's, Cunningham's coming. coming with Wilkins. These guys are catching Aschenbach. His car has gone away a little bit. He's on a full wet setup. Yeah, he was brilliant, obviously opening up that huge lead, but he might just need every bit of that lead. O'Connell, last time, winding through the serpentine back section of this track, heading toward a checkered flag and a championship. But Aschenbach, he is uh, maybe in a little bit of trouble here. We'll have to watch as soon as O'Connell comes through. Pope's there, not close enough. Here he comes, Johnny O, Johnny Red, the man from Flowery Branch, brings it home. A second championship for Cadillac. Cadillac, of course, clinching already the Manufacturer's Championship. Cadillac Racing, the team championship. Johnny O, what a great story. But what's unfolding here? Oh, this look at how tight. close this is. They're really close. They're closing in, but they're running out of corners, Greg. He's arshing back through the final curve. He's going to do it, but by the slimmest of margins. Wilkins trying to take second. Aschenbach gets the championship, his third in three different classes, GT, touring car, now GTS, but by far and wow. away the fastest guy at the end was Wilkins in that class. Wow. Here we go. Our results in GT, O'Connell with the win in the championship, Popes and Pilgrim, even with a drive-through for contact with Sophronis, gets third. Here's the GTS results.
Well, Lawson Archibald hangs on, but barely Cunningham and Wilkins were coming fast. Another lap or two could have been a different story, Greg. Yep, Baldwin there in fourth. That wasn't enough. And as a result, Lawson Aschenbach is going to be your GTS champion as you take a look at the rest of the field. Boy, what a great race to end the season on for Johnny O out of the car, celebrating down there. Jeff Lepper will be with him in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at our GT driver's points presented by Volvo. And at the end, who would have imagined it? But O'Connell coming through for the championship over Sophronis, Pilgrim Popes, and Alex Figgy. Unbelievable. Now to the manufacturer points, Cal. Well, up the top, we see the boys from Cadillac. Just a great job this season with Pilgrim and O'Connell. Audi Sport Customer Racing, a brilliant performance all year, narrowly edging out Volvo. Let's get down to Jeff Lepper with our winner and champ. Johnny O'Connell, race win, but more importantly, the championship. I got to tell you, that was hard work. Awesome, awesome racing. And uh, I can't be more proud of my, my Cadillac guys. You know, the effort they put in all year. And there's nothing like it coming down the wire needing to get a win. There's a little extra motivation. So, uh, you know what, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I got Mikey West, I got all the guys on my team, I got great executives at Cadillac that, you know, want the world to know that this is one hell of an athletic car. So, uh, man, I'm just, uh, I'm a lucky guy today. And back-to-back -back championships. Which is great. You know, I was liking that. And uh, you know what? I got to tell you, you got to give a lot of credit to James Safran as how he drove early in the wet there. He did a great job. You know, his teammate tried to make my life a little bit difficult. So, you know, we had to uh, we had to get by him. But, uh, you know, great job by everyone in Cadillac. You know, some days you got to dig deep. And we dug really deep today. They dug deep and found it, and that win and championship came courtesy of the Cadillac CTSV move of the race for the lead. And ironically, on the very same lap that his championship rival, James Safronis, had to hit pit lane. Absolutely. Meanwhile, there you see Lawson Aschenbrock celebrating with the Black Dog Speed Shop crew. Well earned indeed. Let's get now to our GTS uh, driver's points and presented by Volvo. Aschenbach gets the win. Look at the margin. To Baldwin, it was that close. Wilkins third, Andy Lee fourth, and Peter Cunningham in fifth. And here's the manufacturer points. Presented by Kia Chevy on top. They had strength in numbers and great race cars. Kia, a brilliant season, finish in second. And Jeff Lepper's with a three-time champ. Lawson, you did everything you need to do. You need to win this race, and guess what? You won the championship. <laughs> oh, man, it hasn't even sunk in yet. I got to say hats off there to everybody, Black Dog Speed Shop. You know, our team Chevy Camaro is fast all year. And, you know, I, I think the word of the year is basically attack. You know, once we got that points deficit at Austin, it's a matter of just keeping, keeping our heads down and trucking forward, keeping our nose clean, finishing every lap, and fighting to the end, and we did that. So I'm, I'm just pumped right now. I mean, I, I didn't... I knew we had a shot at it. I knew it was going to be tough, but you know, if I just drove a good race and just tried to keep it till the end there, it'd be good. So, really, really happy. Thanks to all our sponsors: Central Water, OMP, uh, Corsa, uh, Eibach, uh, Rail Battery, GoPro, uh, just everybody. I'm just, I'm so pumped right now. And uh, three different championships and three series for Pro World Challenge. What's that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. You know, it's, uh, it's been a long couple years for me. I, I, I. Right after I won the GT championship, things kind of spiraled out of control there for a little bit. I found myself on the outside looking in a lot without a ride, and you know I just kept pushing. You know I believed in myself. A lot of other people believed in me, and I fortunately was able to kind of rebuild my career back to this right here. And I think out of all the championships, this one probably feels the best right now. So I'm just super stoked right now. I'm ready to I'm ready for 2014 already. <laughs> And the Chevy Sonic and Touring Car B? Nah, probably not. <laughs> Let's take a look at our Sunoco Hard Charger Award. Going to Brian Kleeman in the DXD Clutches Nissan. Up seven spots. Our key at Turning Point of the Race Award. Absolutely no question. Sophronis. Well, just bitterly disappointed, I'm sure. But what a great year. James Sophronis shouldn't hang his head low. Not at all. Our Motul Fast Laps of the Race. Johnny O'Connell in the GT category. Mark Wilkins by a bunch in GTS. He was flying. And... We take a look at our Kia Rewind. Of course, we've got moments throughout the season. We've got immense moments here in all of our four categories. It was a spectacular way uh, to end a championship chase of a season. And obviously, this was a track that presented challenges. This race, the GT GTS race, Cal, the only race of the weekend without a car. Yeah, that's uh, certainly making a statement. It was exciting. It was intense all season long. Beautiful drama here today. Certainly, Baldwin Sephora's will be disappointed. We have two great champions in Johnny O and Lawson Archibald. And this is the 24th season that has come to a close. Next year, the 25th consecutive season of Rally World Challenge competition, and it has become a prestige championship. For Calvin Fish and Jeff Lepper, I'm Greg Creamer. Thanks for joining us all season long. Congrats to all our champions.